Hey guys, in this video we're configuring GNOME themes. Now, full disclosure, the video you're about to watch, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm kind of figuring it out as I go, and GNOME themes, I'm just real disappointed with them. So, nothing like uh, configuring themes in KDE. So, uh, this this video is a little bit all over the place, and it's not like a well thought out guide. So, just you know, know what you're getting yourself into if you really want to watch this video. But let's just jump right into it. Hey guys, today we're going to be configuring themes a GNOME in Fedora Workstation 42. So there's going to be a lot of trial and error and poking around here, so bear with me. We're basically going to show you how to get this working. Step one, we're running sudo dnf install gnome tweaks and gnome extensions app because all the configuration stuff isn't in gnome tweaks. You also need that uh, extensions app as well. And there's going to be another another package I'm going to install a little bit later that also turns out to be essential. So right here, you're going to see we have the extensions app and we also have the GNOME tweaks app there. We're going to check that in a minute. You notice here you can you have some nice things here. Um, nothing directly related to what we were going to do yet. We're going to actually have to add that other package before this is really useful. But yeah, this just controls what GNOME extensions are there and if you can use extensions, stuff like that. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and close that, jump over here, and we're going to go into GNOME Tweaks and see it says Extensions has moved. That's, you know, letting us know that there's that separate Extensions app, which we've already installed. <clears throat> so you can't configure everything within GNOME Tweaks. Um, you know, basically, they're just making things even harder to configure, and it's harder and harder to, uh, you, you know, change the themes and stuff. So looking at poking around in GNOME Themes, there's some useful, or GNOME Tweaks, there's a bunch of useful things here that if you want to adjust any of these things in terms of appearance and stuff like that so these are the themes you have icons cursor and legacy applications um, and there's a few like pre-installed themes nothing too exciting that won't configure the themes for every application so legacy applications are different from a lot of the newer applications so we are eventually going to have to change that and add on that extra package is going to allow us to enable something that's going to let us actually change the main theme so anyways Going in here under Windows, you can enable the minimize and maximize buttons, which is something they just removed from GNOME to make it harder for people. I know there are other ways to minimize and maximize, but uh, at, there's no reason not to have these. They're so standard and, and helpful. You really should have these buttons. It's just wrong to remove them. This lets you add those missing buttons back in. So there you go. Add those buttons back in. And you can change, you know, if they're on the left side, the right side, whatever else. But yeah, nothing super exciting. Um, I have no strong preference with that. So from here, we're going to jump over here and I'm going to go ahead and do DNF search and we're going to search for some themes. You know, keep in mind, we still haven't added all the packages we want to add, but I, I just kind of wanted to show you how you can search for themes. Um, so there's multiple ways to install GNOME themes. You can actually install them using the package manager like this. This doesn't let you preview what they are. So you'd have to kind of know what you're looking for and what you're doing, or you can just test them out. But this is one way you can install themes using the package manager. You can also use it by downloading them from the web, which I personally would recommend a little bit more. Um, keep in mind, all of this is way more difficult than just installing themes on a desktop like KDE, which is you know built to make it easy for you. Anyways, here we're doing sudo dnf install pop gtk4 theme. So just like a normal um, normal package you in install through GTK. And now we're doing ox oxygen icon themes. So this is just the icon themes, not for like window themes or anything like that. So yeah, just install them like a normal package and you can install these themes. Nothing too crazy or exciting here, but it doesn't feel like this, this is how you should do it. It's nice if you know what you want and, you, and there is a package for it. You just install it as a package. That's great, but really not how theming should be done, I think. So anyways this is me poking around and see under here under icons you can see oxygen that's the theme the icon theme we just installed so if you want to actually see that um, we, we'd actually need to open something that uses icons so you see here we open up our files app so bring our file manager over here and you can change to oxygen look at that all the icons change they look kind of beautiful it's nice having something like that honestly i don't feel like i feel like they should have hundreds of themes there ready for you to just change anytime you feel like it but you can see here right through this interface you know gnome tweaks interface right you can go change the icons which you i guess can't do through the regular settings anymore just not a thing they encourage right but 
yeah, you got a few different themes there. You can change your icons back and forth. Nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, there you go. Just swapping back and forth here. And we're going to go ahead and just show you a few other things. It's just a second here. We're, we're just poking around a little bit, sort of kicking the tires and stuff. But yeah, there's, there's another package I'm going to want to install. So if we jump over here, there's the blue curve cursor theme. So we're going to show you a cursor theme. Um, whole separate section for this. It's, it's kind of weird that they're not all unified. Like, I, I guess it's nice. You can configure your cursor and, uh, you, you know, all of that stuff separately. But, um, at the same time, it'd be nice if you do them all in one, all batched together. But, um, that, that's fine. I guess it gives you flexibility. But, um, I don't know. I'm not seeing all the packages to do, you know, if you wanted to install all the packages that go together, I'm just not seeing them. Anyways, it's not as cohesive as you would think or, or as I feel like it really should be. But anyways, you go up here and I think I actually closed it at that point because it wasn't showing the option for the theme I just installed. So killing and restarting gnome tweaks. And let's jump back over here to, yeah, we're going to have to get into appearance over here. And now you see there's a drop down button for the, the other cursor, uh, themes here. So you have blue curve that we just installed. So that's not working by default. And the reason for that is because the cursor theme won't necessarily work on all windows, only I think legacy windows. We'll, we'll see that a little bit later. Um, but this was me poking around with it and seeing that none of these seem to change the cursor. They will. We'll see how that works in a little bit. But yeah, doing a little bit more poking around here and notice how when I move my cursor from the text editor and the configuration app over to uh, LibreOffice, the, the cursor actually changed. And notice I changed legacy application themes and it actually, for some of them it's a dramatic change, some of them you can barely tell, but you can change the themes for legacy applications, which apparently LibreOffice is, but the new GNOME apps like the text editor and the, you know, the GNOME tweaks and the, the file manager, all of those are newer applications. So we're going to have to install a whole other um, category under styles here. So yeah, we can, we can still change the icons. That's me poking around with the icons too, showing you how you can do the legacy application themes and the icon themes and you can change this uh, cursor theme right here so anyways obviously you know you can't change the theme for most of the gnome apps so we have to we're going to install this extra package so gnome shell extension user theme this allows us to change user themes for the regular gnome shell extension so install this package which we should have installed at the beginning and you will i'll show you what that actually changes so now when you go into gnome tweaks if you go into actually after installing that package, so we're opening extensions and gnome tweaks, but if you look under gnome tweaks here, I should be going over to gnome tweaks. All right. Under appearance, notice now you have shell. So above legacy ap applications, you have shell. And now you can also click on user themes in gnome extensions and see shell has this thing. Hey, you need to enable it before you can actually use it. It won't act, let you actually choose it. So now we close that, reopen it after clicking user themes in gnome extensions. And now shell will allow us to change themes for the shell itself, which is applications other than the legacy applications, if that makes sense. Also, I believe I actually rebooted the system. So I, I actually had to reboot the system after um I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to install some themes there but i had rebooted it and not i didn't do that on camera but at, at some point after installing that package and enabling that thing i had to reboot the system so if you're not seeing what you're expecting to see uh you know bounce your system try try doing a reboot now this is a site called gnomelook.org and you have a bunch of nice themes here so the rest of this video we're mostly going to be installing these themes off this website because you can actually preview what the themes are and there's a way larger selection of themes than what you can get it as fedora package just from the default repo so yeah if you go under here under gt so we, we got some gtk4 themes that's not exactly what we want i believe we actually wanted no michelle themes i'm gonna i'm gonna get get back to that in just a bit but here we're showing you how you can unpack a theme so see i downloaded this theme as a tar gz file inside my downloads directory so now i'm going to create a hidden file in my home directory um, and then this is me just checking my notes right here, but you're going to create something under home dot themes. So a hidden directory, it starts with a dot. It's going to be, have to be named exactly like this. I'm creating this directory manually and you, you have to create this directory and copy the, 
the theme files into that directory and unpack them inside that directory. And so here we go. We are inside our themes directory. We unpacked it doing tar xvfz, just unpack that directory inside there. And now we have the we we're going to have to close that and reopen gnome tweaks for it to see it. And so now appearance and still not seeing okay, that's I guess legacy applications. Um, anyways, this is what I was saying. This is not really for the gnome shell. So I've got the wrong type of theme. So that's all fine and great, but we're, we're going to have to go ahead and download some newer themes from the website. So we're going to be doing that in just a second here. All right. So anyways, apparently before I'm doing that, I, I wanted to try this out with, you know, a legacy application here. So we're going to change the theme on LibreOffice, on, on a LibreOffice application. So, yep, we, we can change between, uh, yeah, there you go. Switching between these, nothing too exciting. Same, same silly stuff we saw before. So nothing super great there. So anyways, jumping back over to uh, gnome look, you, you see now on the on the left side, I have selected gnome shell themes, and these will actually change the theme for most of the newer gnome shell applications that are not legacy applications. Um, not, not a huge selection of themes and they don't look amazing. Some of them look kind of cool. So we're gonna try downloading this just to try it out. Not that this is the look I would wanna be going for, and it makes you wait a little bit. Now, if you've tried using KDE and changing the themes in KDE, you're instantly going to recognize how how much incredibly easier it is to do this with the KDE. With the KDE, you can just browse and edit, the, browse, download, and install, and, and configure the themes all through the GUI. Super easy and straightforward on KDE. Not so much on GNOME. GNOME, you're downloading these manually, copying them into a directory. Huge pain. Anyways, this is me, um, you know, copying and unpacking some more themes here um turns out this is a xz file and not a tar gzipped file so we're, we're gonna have to unzip this slightly differently none of them are zipped consistently no big deal but um again not as easy as just using the gui like you do with kde so this is me having forgot the exact command for an xz file, but I just tab it out and find on xz. Pretty straightforward. That's going to on xz the file. We still have a tar file, so we're going to have to on tar that as well. No big deal here. Just tar xvf without the z because we're not unzipping it. And so there we go. We have unpacked that rr purple theme. And let's open up GNOME tweaks again that we had to stop and start so it would recognize the new theme. And here we go. Let's try our shell, our new shell theme, which why am I clicking on legacy applications? All right, shell right here, RR purple. So we see we have an RR purple theme and it doesn't show up under legacy. So it's only gonna change your new applications. And apparently this is just the shell. So a lot of new GNOME applications, their theme won't change at all. And I vaguely remember reading something about needing something that's a WADA, or however you say that, a, a, a theme that's compatible with that. If you actually want a theme to work with your um, actual new GNOME shell applications, or I think it's something to do with GTK4 or something along those lines. If it's a GTK4 app, you're, you're going to need um, something that's compatible with that. So there's even less compatibility and flexibility with adding themes. Anyways, you can see adding this theme changed some of the background and it changed the bar at the top and a little bit of the status area at the top, but not all of it. So um, to be honest with you, um, yeah, see, not, not as many options. You can still change these um, independently. You can change the legacy applications independently from the newer applications, but it, it's seriously not cohesive. And I know there are a lot of people out there making GNOME look amazing. It just takes more effort. But you can do it. And to be fair, um, I don't have, this is the first time I've configured GNOME in many, many years. Otherwise, I just stick with the default stuff for GNOME. Now with KDE, I can figure that every time and it's super easy. Um, with GNOME, I, I have not done a lot of GNOME configuration in many years. So I, I'm coming into this not really knowing what I'm doing with GNOME itself. But um, 
with 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 what I've looked at so far, this is seriously disappointing. Just just for gnome, I know you can make it look amazing, and there are people showing off their amazing themes after having getting everything just right. They they get things to look really amazing, but um, yeah, th this is not. It takes more work from what I can tell. Maybe if you know what you're doing, it's a little bit easier and faster to just do it. But yeah, not, not the experience I'm having just because I'm kind of new to GNOME themes. But you know, GNOME is supposed to be a just works thing, but really it's just works if you know, you know, if you want to, if so long as you don't want to theme it, as long as you want to stick with their built in themes and only switch between light and dark, then GNOME just works. But if you, if you want to do anything beyond just switching between light and dark mode, it doesn't just work. Your gnome just works when you don't want to mess with the themes too much. But um, yeah, anyways, this is me poking around, looking at some of the themes that are available. Some of them look like they're okay. Again, not super cohesive. And keep in mind, there are um, multiple files here you could download. Um, these look like version. Some of these are for some of these uh, uh, themes. They're like versioned files, so they're different versions of the theme. Some of them look like maybe you'd have to unpack multiple directories here in order to you know give you the same theme for you know legacy you know modern or 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 what whatever you know cursors icons all that stuff maybe you should be unpacking more than one of these to get all of that stuff in one um i didn't play around with it too much but um bot bottom line it's it's a lot it's not that big of a deal if you want to sit down and poke around with it and get it to look perfect so if you want to spend a lot of time tweaking and stuff great um, but, but yeah, KDE, you would think you would spend more time poking around and tweaking things on KDE and, but, but really they just make it way easier for you. So this is me seven, seven unzipping. This is the third zip, the, the third compression format that I've, I've come across so far. We had XZ, 7Z and TARGZ. So a bunch of different, um, compression formats that we've, uh, come across for these all downloading from GNOME shell because there's just no standard for it. Not a big deal. If you're, if you're going to be downloading things by hand anyways, like if you're going to be manually unzipping things on the command line, it's not that big of a deal if they're not consistent. Um, but realistically, they should just have a tool that does this for you. And if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure GNOME used to have that functionality, but the GNOME devs just like to remove functionality because they, it's been said that they generally discourage theming and customization. And I, I think that's kind of true. They want you to do things their way and that that's what it is with no so anyways yeah not not super cohesive you could you can make it cohesive and make it all fit it just requires more effort anyways um to be fair i don't know what i'm doing when it comes to gnome it and uh you know it is what it is but hopefully someone gets some use out of this or or some entertainment about this i almost didn't want to i really didn't want to post this video but i recorded all of this and i know i said i would do it i should sit down and figure out how to do this the right way but i i don't think i'm going to spend the time on gnome i'm going to focus on other desktops anyways hit that subscribe button thanks for watching and that's it for today